Do you see it now? Oh, now, now we see it. Now, oh, I guess we can see your slides and you. Okay, so this was the 8% uh, recurrence year after three years in a patient with large PFO and septoanalysis. And I ask you whether this would be important if this is your daughter, and you probably would say, no, it's not important, correct? Yes, because it was a blank slide. Yeah, but now, can you see it now? <laughs> well, now it's becoming more important. Okay. <laughs> even okay, in so I, I already told you the history of this patient, 53-year-old patient with a, with a stroke and the PFO is the only potential cause. Do you see the device now? Uh, amazing uh, technology, yes. Ah, great. So that is the Theraflex occluder, which is not a new device, but it is a new device in India because, as I understood, it just got approval and, and will be launched in these days. So it's made of nitinol only. It's covered with titanium and titanium nitrate, uh, which means less galvanic corrosion when you compare this to other devices, which very often have covered combination of steel and nitinol. And it has less nickel release than other devices because of that coating. It has a very flexible connection between the delivery cable and the device, and it has no uh, half on the left atrial side. Here you now let's start the with the case. System here, how it's moving, and you can see the tunnel of the PFO opening here. We measured our length of the tunnel of 11 to 12 millimeters. Okay. It's mobile septum, but not uh, a definition, probably not an anything yet, right? Yeah, yeah, on the border, it's yeah. like the excursion is 13 to 17 millimeters. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And let's see 30 degree, maybe. Okay, so I think there's uh, nothing really special here. So we will go ahead and uh, try to cross this PFO. I have a multi-purpose catheter in place. Rotation is the key for crossing a PFO. And I think I'm across here. And then you we are. go to the uh, left upper carne vein. Oh, that is the appendage. Yes. And I want to go to the vein, I go to the appendage and vice versa. Now I'm in the carne vein and we use Ampers extra speed wire. Uh, to exchange. Are you able to increase uh, the volume at your end, or do we need to? Uh, I will show you the device in a second. Unique with that device is a very flexible connection between the, de the uh, device, and that is certainly an advantage, especially valuable in ASDs, because there you have more problems. To I think you have to increase on your side the device, but sometimes also for PFOs. That's a bit better. So if you're I go to LAO. Be careful. So it's can you always do the balloon sizing or not always no so uh i mean this uh, it can be debated and uh i more and more don't do it but uh for the purpose of the live demonstration i would like to show the most safest way is balloon sizing because sometimes you cannot really determine the size of of the pfo by echo you cannot measure that at all and with balloon sizing you get an idea about the diameter and you get an idea about the stiffness of the tunnel. We have a quite long time tunnel here, about 12 millimeters. So, uh, and when we see a long waist here on the balloon sizing, then we know that it's a stiff material there and that may influence the decision what kind of device to use. Uh, I mentioned this before that I always connect the uh, uh, pressure manifold to the lumen of the balloon. So we are measuring the pressure in the balloon camera screen. Oh, let's check zero. Let's check zero. So we will measure the pressure inside of the balloon, which should not exceed the pressure in the left and right atrium. And then we are sure that we are not applying too much tension to the uh, rims of the PFO. I have to remove the contrast. I will do try a slow inflation by supporting team until first time you see your indentation. Whether yeah. It, how much that pressure measurement adds on to? Oh. Uh, can you uh, add a little bit of contrast? Mm -hmm. Well, here you can see that. I mean, this is now, on, or you can see a little waste when you zoom in. And we have the same, you can see the pressure curve? Yeah. So it's about zero, the pressure in the uh, balloon. Can you give a little bit more? You see, it's actually quite long tunnel here. A huh? little bit more. 
we still have no pressure increase. So that should be the diameter of the PFO. It's about probably 10, 11, 12 millimeters. Can you measure that? And the fact that it's aneurysmatic, that probably also influences maybe in borderline cases your choice? No, not really. I never try to cover the uh, aneurysm of the septum. I always pick the device which is able to close the defect. So here we have eight millimeter, 8.1 or 8.05 millimeter. So that means we would go for the regular size with the 25. We should have the PFO diameter should be twice the diameter of the, of, and we should go for 25.18, right? 25.18. Uh, we should have the PFO device should be twice the diameter of the balloon size yeah. defect. And then you are pretty safe that it will not embolize. But when I look at the TEE, this could also have been a PFO with a balloon stretch diameter of 14, 15. And then I would have chosen a ASD device and not a PFO device. I'm not pulling back the balloon. So an advantage of the uh, uh, life tech device is that it comes pre-packed, so preloaded, so you don't have to load it at all. I will uh, remove the 10 string sheet in the groin. Can somebody take a send and exchange for the uh, delivery sheet that comes with the device? So in contrast to Amplatzer and uh, Oclotech, you need a, a 10 trench device, a 10 trench sheet for the 25 millimeter PFO device. A little larger. Keep them missing, but or so I'm inserting the sheath here. Okay, now I'm across. Good. So let's look at the device. As I said, it comes preloaded. Okay, and there is a the flexible connect. Flexible connection is made by a little suture. Can you focus on that? Now you should be able to see it, right? Okay. So yeah, this is the most flexible connection you can imagine. And now we can attach saline here. Make this tight. Okay, and flush please. Yes. Okay, good. Is the sheath still across? Yeah, it is. All right. Okay, then I can de air it here. That's great. Mm -hmm. So I just learned that there's a hemostatic valve. Uh, that's great again. Okay, that looks good. Now flush. And we also flush again from here. Okay, good. And flush here as well. Okay, good. Okay, now we can advance this. Uh, as you have seen on the left atrial side, there is no harp. As like with the Ocrotec, for example, which I think is an advantage because uh, this means less risk for thrombus formation. The device is covered by uh, titanium nitrate, which uh, prevents nickel release from the device, not 100%, but to 90 or 95%. And also it facilitates uh, endotheliation of the device. Can we go to nine line? Okay. Uh, can we have T again? No? <laughs> okay. So we do it without T. That's fine. So I pull back. Can I have a little puff? Yeah. A little more. Okay. I think that's nice. We can do this under angiographic control. Let's do a Cineron here. We can see that uh, the septum secundum is nicely visible coming from above. The device is on the left side. You also can see the floppy uh, inferior septum primum. Uh, so I pull a little bit of tension and then I pull back the sheath and deploy the right. Uh, atrial disc here. Uh, a little bit resistance. Oh, okay. Now it's good. 
Okay. And you see how flexible this connection is. It's really nice. Can we have another engine mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That looks good. I feel confident that we can release it. And uh, the release is done with this uh, button here. This is a safety button, the orange one on the below side. So I press that one. And then I pull back the blue one. And this will release the suture from the device. Then I can pull back. Huh? No, it's not fully released yet. You see the suture, it's not a suture, but made from metal. You see it's still going around the half of the device. Let me advance the sheet a little bit. And now it's released. Okay, we can do a final angiogram. Good. Okay, good. That's what we want to show. Okay, host. Uh, Thank you very much.